You know when there's some certain jobs where a customer goes, Nick, you know you're good at what you do, uh, can we have this? And you go, say less, no worries, not a problem, I can do that. Well today this is one of them jobs, and we all know those jobs aren't very fun. So what we have today is simple toothbrush charger, dual one, very nice, fast fix mattress, 47 mil, all righty then, no problem at all. But what we have to do, put it in an electric bathroom cabinet mirror. All right, let's get on with it. Box in a box, why not? I'm not even gonna, I'm not playing this game. So not only is this an expensive one, also a heavy one. So it's because they didn't want a shaver socket or electric toothbrush holder visible in the bathroom. I stupidly said, oh, you can incorporate into it. You do this, that, and the other, thinking I normally talk before I speak because it is possible, obviously, but is it fun? No. Is it probably worth the time that I'm gonna be spending on it financially for me? No. Is it gonna look cool though? Yes, if we do it right. Also, at the end of this video, I'm gonna give you guys a bit of an insight of some stuff that's actually happening to do with me and the channel and all that sort of stuff, so stay tuned to the end, but it's kind of a big deal. So keep your ears out and eyes, okay. Right, so this mirror will just screw straight back to the wall. It's also metal. There's a grommet this side, can I, I can presume that. Right, so that's our connection. And what we're gonna to wanna to do is figure out, so the toothbrush holder is gonna to have to go bottom right to allow the height for and to stand up and then shelves are just gonna to be top and bottom. So it's definitely, you might be able to squeeze that one in if I put that there. So my plan is I'm gonna cut it from the outside. So I've got a cone bit, angle grinder, multi-tool carbide blade is, I'm just gonna do a pencil line now, top and bottom, and knock the center of this out. And drill that there. I'll drill it straight through with that, flip it over, draw around the patras, cut it round. We'll see if the angle grinder works on the multi-tool, see what's a bit better. But the problem with this is, not only have I got to put this on the wall, I then have to cut a hole in the back of the bathroom wall to allow it to slot through, because obviously the depth is considerable for the size of this, but then we have to get the connection from the mirror into the mirror, back out the mirror, into the shaver socket, or whether or not we double up into the shaver socket and then come out into the mirror. So, wish me luck. And obviously just please be aware that by doing this, you avoid all warranty. Okay. Right. Oh, that was a clean cut. Right. Okay, camera angle's poor. You get the gist. I'm gonna grab the file, take this edge off, but uh, Nice clean cut and it should look quite nice in there. But before we do this and file this up, we're gonna even hold it up in the bathroom, mark this on the wall, like I said, get that cut out and feel, see what we're gonna do with the cable entry. Cause at the moment I've just got some cables hanging through the wall on a way go. We're gonna see what lands best, chop that across. It's just all stud work anyway. So I mean, I'll do this ages ago, but I don't think we ever filmed this side. And I, I'm looking forward to showing you what's behind you. Not me, you. Fabulous, fabulous sunset. Nice. All right, let's go in the bathroom. Right. Just set the camera up in here so I could walk in. Okay. Uh, where goes here? It's six, uh, 610 mil, the base unit of the mirror. Uh, I've not measured the wing, so it's absolutely pointless. But we've got the sink unit. That's uh, completely in line with the two 
they're not grout lines, this is like that aqua board sort of stuff. So I want to get a center measurement, which is the height wise, we're going to drop it down quite low because the people that live here are this big. Um, they weren't, anyway, didn't eat the greens. Uh, so we've got that there. What I'm gonna do is not break the sink. I'm gonna put this brand new box of U10s I've just bought on the house sailor. And then we're gonna take the weight for me. Ish. Jesus Christ, don't break. Find my pencil mark, which is now non existent. to get to the screws. <sighs> right, round two. And also I need to double check with the builder that the pipes for this sink below don't go straight up. All right, so we're gonna find them very quickly. Where would the pipes go? Do they go down and around? Do they go up? Let's make a phone call and double check. Right, got some bad news. Straight there. Wasn't really thought about when it was being done, but such is life. Okay, so there should be aqua paneling on the front, then we've got 12 mil plasterboard behind. So slow and steady, we'll get this layer out. I'm actually gonna cut it slightly bigger to make sure we can get the lay in of the fast fix box, but yeah, to me there should be a stud work here, potentially here. But they did say the pipes were probably clipped to the side of the wood as they come down and they're plastic as well. So we just need to make sure we're doing this dead carefully. So wish me luck. I know where the stop tap is. So. Oh, pipes all the way over here. But pipes are in line with it, but we're not. You got the thickness of at least of that. It's at least three inches, that is. So I fished the cable across into this one. It's all within the enclosure. The 20 mil bit, I'm just gonna do, cut this out now to allow this to come through more. And then after that, I've already ran two screws in here. So the plan is, there's no wooden beams here, there's no wooden beams here. I can't really get plasterboard fixes in because of this without cutting it, let's say a plug out, putting it in. I still don't think that's gonna be the best, but I know there's a strut here and here directly in the middle, which I wanna fix to permanently. So we want to get this up on the wall. I'll do a little pencil line where it is. I want to do a tiny drill bit to get it through, to pinch this back to the wall properly. But then you do run the risk. Well, you don't run the risk. You then run the fact that when you open the door, you will have two screw heads because at the moment they're all concealed behind the side mirrors where this one is going to be in the center. So I'm going to try and get it on the wall. These two fixings should just be enough just to hold it on. And then we're going to pre-plan, but I'm trying to do this the best way possible, really. So when it comes to it, just gonna link that up and through into there. So we've got into the back of this, into the light, all of one radial, better bing, better boom. Right, let's just go for it. Let's get it up on the wall and see how we're looking. I mean, that is pretty solid to the wall. And we're level. Where? That ain't going nowhere. Yeah, see what I mean? So I was gonna, the, the joist being there, I could drill there and there, but then you will happily, happily, you will openly see it as you open it. And if you had wooden shelves, then you could hide it behind the back where the shelf was going. But in this instance, it's glass. So it's gonna be a, a no-go for me, right? I ain't going anywhere, okay. At least we can all hopefully agree on together that, that is not going anywhere. Another thing as well, so I try and be, let me change this camera. I try and be as honest and as truthful to you guys as physically possible. I'm 99% the same as on the videos as I am in real life. I just don't swear on the videos. Um, I'm a potty mouth in real life. And uh, that was from working on building sites with copious other trades, uh, especially Stokies. And if any Stokies watching this, you'll completely understand where the potty mouth stuff comes from. 
and it's just stuck and that's it. But uh, the reason I don't, there's two reasons why I don't swear on the videos. One, I remember when I first started YouTube and I used to swear occasionally on a few videos. First of all, it adds nothing to the video um, whatsoever. And I thought, well, some of my videos are getting shown in college. Gaz at uh, GSH, when he was at Tresham College, he said to me, cut out the swearing and we can watch your videos in college and the learners can enjoy your videos in class. I thought, right, cool, understand. And the second thing is, I remember years ago when I watched Thomas, Nagy, Nagy, whatever, um, when I used to watch Tom, when he used to upload anyway, um, I remember sat down next to the two kids, I was on my phone there on their iPads, and he dropped the C-bomb out of absolute nowhere. I'm pretty sure it's Tom, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I know where he dropped that word, and I was like, kids around me, and then from then on, I didn't really watch any of his stuff, especially in front of family and the kids and whatever, because I just couldn't trust that that word wouldn't be said again. And obviously I then learn, you know, if I'm going to watch other people, i.e. Dave Savory, don't watch it around anyone. Make sure you're in a dark, quiet room by yourself that's soundproof, where no noise can escape, so they can't hear the hideous things that come out of his mouth. But yeah, that's the main reasons. But yeah, just let me know in the comments. Like, I don't swear for a reason because I think it's more enjoyable to watch and it's easy to view, uh, especially when people are watching with kids or watching in colleges, if you're watching this college high. But um, yeah, there's a reason for it, so... Let us know. Let us know if you, if you want some swearing, go to Dave's channel. If you don't want swearing, stay here. Drop a like. All righty then. All right. He's done. He's done. He's square. I'm going to hoover this out. I'm going to put these back on and... Sweet. <laughs> just put it all, all the screws back together and then the sensor stopped working. It was just permanently on and it wouldn't turn off. Glove, sensor, nothing. So obviously I turned it on with my arm by accident when I was putting it up, because it's all live now. And I thought, oh, I'll just do this. I'll get it all ready and then I'll show you through the video and we'll pull all the film off. But the problem is, glove, no. Arm, yes. So it's, it's to do with, it's PIR, so it's infrared. I should have really asked the customer if they wanted me to peel this off. So, just had some lunch. We've stopped, I've put the wall lights on. So this is the downstairs ba uh, bedroom. Master bed's going here. We've got bedside table uh, lamps. Hanging ones, we've had to alter it and lift it all up and everything like that. But they're quite cool fittings. Let's bring you a bit closer so you can see. Hanging ones, either side. USB double socket, either side of the bed. There and there and there. And then that's... Pretty much it in this room. I've just got to do the smoke alarm all the way up there, but that's not a job for today. But I'm happy with how everything's gone. Obviously it's took a long time because you want to make sure first of all you get it right, you get it square. My phone's ringing. Sorry about that, my other half rang me. Other half's nan is going to hospital again, so I'm gonna get the kids from school. Bless her. Um, yeah, so make sure you cut it right, you make sure you don't scratch it. We want to make sure we're not hitting the pipes. A simple job where hanger cupboard, and put a shaver socket on could take an hour. That's took me three, nearly, with a few breaks in between. Um, I am, as of this week, no longer working with Bosch. I've always been a massive Bosch fan since day one when they asked to sponsor the channel uh, when I was at like five, 6,000 subscribers. I've always had Bosch before, so when they approached me, it was a dream come true. Um, I use their stuff for years. I can't fault it, I love the stuff. Um, the only thing it does lack for me is range compared to other brands and I've been given an opportunity to work with another brand now. I am not sponsored by them as of yet. It's going to be like a have a play with these, see how you get on with and we're going to talk in a few months, uh, potential uh, collaborations, paid sponsorship, that sort of stuff. I'd rather be as honest with you as I can be. Um, obviously I can't talk to people about how much money it's worth or this, that and the other but I can be as upfront as open as honest about it because I'd rather you lot be in the know. Um, I'm too, I overshare too much anyway, which I know. Um, but you'll be, you'll find out very soon who it is. I mean, it might be quite obvious, but um, yeah. So for all the stuff that I've done with Bosch, Bosch, thank you very much. I've loved it all. It's been fantastic. I'm moving on to other things now. And I'm sorry if it comes across to some people where it's a bit like you're following the money. 
I am to a point. I'm not going to lie. I am to a point. I've got to think of me, family, stuff I want to do in the future. Um, equally, I want to try other things as well. And when you're stuck with a tool brand, um, not I mean, don't mean with sponsorship, but when you're stuck in with the tool brand as and you've got all the batteries and everything, it is very, very difficult to try something else. And I can't recommend certain products from, let's, let's say, Bosch, because I've only ever used Bosch for the past, realistically, 14 years of my career. I've never given any other tool brand a try other than it be Metaba Wall Chaser, uh, DeWalt Cable Stapler. I don't own any other power tools or any other stuff. So when I say Bosch is fantastic, it is. It's been great for me, but I have no comparison over other things. So I hope that makes sense. I hope you've liked the video already. If you can, that'd be fantastic. And um, I'm going to go and start filming for the next video in the kitchen. So have a good one. Love you. Bye.